guys, welcome back to the Share Parenting Podcast, where every mom deserves to feel sure of her parenting. I'm your host, Sammy Bell, creator of Share Parenting and author of Share Parenting, Building Blocks to Create Their Best Childhood. Here on the podcast, we address the issues that make moms question themselves or their kids, and we discuss creative solutions that meet the needs of each unique mother and child. Let's dive in. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Share Parenting Podcast. This is the Ways We Mom segment where we learn from each other's motherhood journeys. Today, we have Taylor Douglas, and she has been on quite the journey. (laughs) She has an amazing story, and I was so excited that she agreed to come and share with us so that we could hear about really overcoming obstacles and taking the challenges that face us and turning them into incredible outcomes. So thank you so much, Taylor, for being here. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Yeah. So my name is Taylor Douglas and I'm a speaker and I'm a personal development mentor and I, I help people like figure out their people problems. And that's what I really love to do. I, I, I talk to people all day, like I'm a conversationalist, I'm a connector, because I I learned a long time ago just how important it was to have like people that you love in your life. And it's it's become a really big thing for me, but I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a four-year-old, four-and-a-half-year-old, and a a two-year-old, and they are uh, magnificent, adventurous creatures. And uh, being a mom has been an adventure, And I'm just here because I want to share the things that have worked for me and just inspire you to, you know, go be your own version of your best mom that you could be or parent if you're not a mom. (laughs) So that's me. That's, I'm just, I'm just me. I don't know. (laughs) You are you, and we are grateful that you are you. Um, So you have not always had the smoothest of journeys when you know, now you're able to inspire people and influence people and show them how to influence other people. And you do all of this incredible uplifting work, but there was a period of time where you weren't necessarily in that really bright place. Do you want to tell us any bit of that story? Yes. Um, so when I was a teenager, I suffered from like severe severe lack of confidence and I was extremely codependent which if you don't really know what that means it means that everyone else and the way they felt about me determined how I got to feel it determined who I got to be and it like ran the way that I was it ran my emotions and it oh it's just it's a place of like really deep misery really yeah And so inside of that place, I was constantly seeking for external, like, love. And I got married when I was 17, right after I graduated from high school. And by the time I was 19, I was getting divorced from someone who was sleeping with other women, addicted to pornography, and, like, you know, going to the bar every night to not come home. And, you know, it was... um, what's the right word? It shook my identity. Yeah. Like, it shook me because I had this idea of who I thought I was and the life I would have and how things would go. Like I was like, I'm going to get married. I'll have kids. I'll be married forever because my parents were married for 40 something years at that point. I mean, now I think they're married almost 47 years now. And so I had this idea that I would get married. We would always be married. We would just work on all the things and it would be great. And it didn't go that way not even a little bit. And so I really dealt with some really deep beliefs about myself and the way that I thought my life should go. So here I am, I'm 19. And if you're, if you're close to 19 right now, or maybe you're much older, you can think back to what it's like to be 19, like how much stuff you know about the world. It's very little, no matter how much you've actually learned about it. And I was out on my own in Florida, broke, now alone, and just totally scared out of my mind, and I was going to get through it, and I was miserable, and I just seriously 
couldn't imagine myself without this part of my life, right? Like if I'm not married to this person, like who am I? And I had to go and through this journey of really deep self-discovery. And I had to discover all of my family cycles, all of the like thought processes that I had that even led me to be in this situation in the first place. And then all of the ways that I felt about myself and how I'd even come to feel that way. And then once, once I understood all those things, which took some time, <laughs> then I had to replace it with something else because you can't just understand all of these like uh, negative things about yourself and not put something back in because you'll just end up making those happen again because you don't know any different. And that's the more difficult part of the journey. I think is actually replacing that, which is inside of you. I agree. I have a similar story. I mean, I was um, with someone from 16 to 19. We were engaged. He started cheating on me. I had this vision of my life that we were going to be together forever because that's what we said. And when you say it, you do it, right? Um, yeah. We disagreed. And I really, I was very, very, very codependent. I was very depressed at 19 as well. <laughs> um, and that's just a hard place to be. And I think that there's on top of actually being in that experience and it being hard societally, there's so many people who sort of discredit that experience because you're young. Oh, mm -hmm. you don't know. You don't know what real love is. You know, you'll get over it. You'll be fine. And it's like, but at this moment I'm hurting and I need somebody to understand that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think, I mean, man, it took me years to learn what codependency was. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I entered, you know, my marriage with my husband with still codependency. And fortunately, he is the antithesis <laughs> of codependent. And that challenged me. That was, was very, it was good for me at the time. It was enraging. <laughs> and it was really good for me. Um, but it did take me years to even recognize those patterns. And mm -hmm then a lot of dedicated, focused work to actually replace them with healthy mm -hmm. patterns. So I completely agree. Like it is work. This isn't like, Hey, it's easy peasy rainbows and unicorns. Like that's not really what we do at Sure Parenting. We do the hard work because it's worth it. So yes. from there, you obviously made a ton of changes and your life got really awesome. And when I met you, you were speaking and going to school and raising kids and married and doing like 500 different things. And I know that kind of a general consens consensus was how on earth do you do all of this? <laughs> yeah, so when we met, we met at the, the Moms on Fire retreat in September 2018. So it's been almost two years. And yeah, I was in school full time. I had just gotten a full time job, like literally two weeks before that. Um, I was working on speaking. I had my first like speaking thing like a week before that. Yes, two tiny children who at the time were six months and uh, like two and a half. So they were really little. And they're like, what, how do you do all of that? And um, the way I learned to do all that was through well, I healed myself, like when I healed all the things that I did. And it's all about support, like finding the people in your life that can support you and your dreams and what you're doing and support you in the things you need support in. I was dying as a stay at home mom, like, because like three weeks before that I was a stay at home mom. Yeah, I was going to school. Um, but I had been going to school and I just took my kids with me to school and I discovered for myself, like stay at home, mommy, you know, wasn't working. I was miserable. I was dealing with postpartum anxiety and it, I needed out of my house and, you know, higher power was like, yes, you need to get out of your house. Like you need help. And so I recruited help. Like I asked my mother-in-law to help me watch my kids and, and I, worked full time and I was gone like morning for like six months and morning tonight while people were like 
Yeah. Wow. Um, depends on the day. It just, it cut out. So I was making sure I understood. Oh, yeah. So I was gone morning to evening, like every single day, except for like the weekends. And I was going to events and stuff on the weekends. I had to do that so that I could survive as a parent. And people are like, wait, you did that for six months? And I'm like, yeah, I did. My mother-in-law moved in with me and basically took over parenting my children because I was suffering and I didn't know how to deal with it. I hadn't, re- I didn't realize how severe anxiety was. Like I had no idea that postpartum depression anxiety was so intense. Like I had, could have never guessed. Nobody ever told me that. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important to validate the moms that they don't thrive sitting at home every day. There are moms who love being at home every day. That is their, their joy. And there are moms who love being out of the house every day. And both moms are valid. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I had, again, a similar experience with my first, I had postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety. And I felt like I was going crazy. It was like Groundhog's Day. And I, my brain was atrophying and I just needed to do something to be me in the midst of this new identity that I had formed as Xavier's mom. And, you know, I, um, I started a, a work from home business and I just was doing a little bit after he was, uh, sleeping you know, for maybe an hour (laughs) and I would get on the computer and I would talk with adults and, you know, a lot of it was virtual for me because I do actually like being at home. I just didn't like being at home doing quote unquote nothing. Like it felt like the same like six things just over and over and over again. And so just infusing a little bit of something that was just mine into that mix really helped me. Um, and for some people it's going and getting a full-time job and for some people it's being in school and for some people, you know, it is bigger. It's going on retreats. You know, it just, it doesn't have to look the same for each one of us. That's really my point. And I think that's so valid and getting help and asking for help. I mean, like, Hey, this is not working for me. Help me in some way. Even if you can't do it for me, like help me with ideas. Like I, I need something here because the way this looks isn't working. Mm-hmm. That takes strength to be able to say that and to be able to step up and make changes to make it make it work. Yeah. I mean, I remember the first time that I called somebody like when I was at home with myself and um, I was having like a fit of postpartum anxiety, right? Like I was yelling at my kids and I was like, I'm not okay. And I called my friend and I was like, I just need you to come to my house right now. Like I'm not okay. And I just need help. Please come be with me. And it does. It takes like the willingness to be vulnerable and like courageous enough to say that you need help. But you know, what's the alternative, right? Like you're, you want to hide, right? Like hide everything that you're experiencing and pretend like everything's okay. Like that's no way to live. No. People around you don't get to be connected with you. They don't get to like contribute to your life if you're not willing to tell them what you need because people are so willing to help and then this friend was like we weren't like best friends she was like someone who lived in my neighborhood we went to church together and I was just like I need you like I know you're home right now and I need you to come to my house right now and like the message really in that is like it's okay to ask people for help Right. Like I spend, I'm home. Well, I'm in my office at my house right now. And I still have my mother-in-law who nannies for me, but now she nannies like 20 hours a week. Right. I get my kids ready in the morning and then I have like four hours in the middle of the day where I like do work stuff or whatever I want. And I pay her to do that. Right. And I pay her the whole time. Right. I, I paid her the entire time she's been with us because she's doing me a great service. And there have been times where I couldn't pay her and she was okay and we worked it out. But it was the willingness to just be like, hey, <laughs> like not surviving or barely. I'm barely surviving. And like it's worth it. It's worth it to let the people in your life love you. And, you know, some of you may not have as many people in your life willing to help, right? And so you might have to seek people. You might have to make friends with people who are willing to help you. I think. And that's okay. Yeah. 
I, I think that it's, there's a lot of us who, when we're in that place, we feel like we can't ask the people we know, maybe because they do know us and we feel like they'll judge us or they won't take it seriously or whatever it is. And seeking help from outside is fine too. You know, I've met some of the most incredible people because I went to an I can support group. I was not happy about how my first birth turned out and I just needed a space where I could express that without people telling me to get over it. And because I went and sat there and listened and shared, I've met almost all of my best friends, essentially, in some way, stem from doing that one thing. And, you know, I just, when you look at that ripple effect, it's worth it. Like, I think what you just said was so key. It is worth it to let the people in your life love you. And when we, one of the, the, my favoritest favorite things that you say is healed, not hardened because Mm -hmm. so many of us turn hard. We just put that wall up and we lock the gate and fine, I'll just be strong and nobody can ever get close to me again. And Mm -hmm. inside we're suffering and we're alone and we're hurting and we desperately want somebody to help us. And we're so afraid that they might not be able to, that we would rather not risk it. And I love your message to really take that risk, to be vulnerable. I mean, we talk about it in Share Parenting. There's an entire chapter on vulnerability for a reason. Parenting is a very vulnerable thing. (laughs) It will expose all of your weak points. It will hold up a mirror to you and be like, and this is an issue you need to deal with, and this one, and this one. And it's something that we used to have these, these whole villages of people to support us with. And now we're expected to just do it all alone and do it perfectly. And by perfect, that changes by every single other person's definition. So you, like, even if you theoretically could do it perfectly, you can't because then the next person's going to go, yeah, but see, that's not perfect by my definition. And it's just constantly being judged. And the solution isn't to make everybody else happy. The solution is to heal your heart. It's to make it work your way. It's to honor yourself. And that is why I love being around you because you just exude exactly what I believe in. You exude the the power to live in self-honor. And it's exciting. I see your posts. Before I like really became familiar with your style of writing and everything, I'd read something real quick without seeing who posted it. And I'm like, who wrote that? Oh, it's Taylor. Who wrote that? That's Taylor again. And every time it was Taylor, <laughs> I was like, I like this lady. Um, and hearing you speak was super inspirational. And I think that, you know, part of it is a, a determination. You definitely have that drive and that fire. Um, but I think that people, sometimes they kind of sit around waiting to feel that. And I think sometimes you have to take action first and then you feel that later. Yeah. Has that been your experience? Well, with myself, um, (laughs) I'm more likely to take action if there's some sort of pain that I'm trying to avoid. Um, No. But I learned that, right, I learned that the hard way. And I was so willing to put up with so much, like, pain and misery before that, like, now I'm like, wait, I'm not willing to put up with being miserable. I'm not willing to put up with anything that makes me feel like less than myself. I'm not willing to put up with anything that doesn't make me feel respected, unique, self-honored, empathetic, right? Like I'm not willing to do it anymore. And so when I talk to people and I have conversations with people who are my friends, people who have just met me, I'm like, you have to find what you're not willing to put up with, right? Like I'm not willing. I won't do it. It's so powerful to stand in that strength. To be, will, to be willing to say what you're not willing to stand for. And that, honestly, that really was my turning point. Um, I, you know, was struggling postpartum depression, all of those things. And I remember screaming at my, my oldest when he was really little. And I was just like, yeah, I'm not willing to be that person. Mm-hmm. Like, no, not an option for me. Mm-hmm. And it was exactly that. It was like, I am not willing to go down this road. Something's got to get because this isn't okay with me. Um, And 
I think that so often that our brains lie to us, they make us think we're alone and Mm -hmm. there are people I'm out there. You're out there. Like there are people that will hear you and help you and support you and root for you and encourage you. And you know, sometimes those people are even better because they don't know your whole backstory. They don't know all the family drama or the rumors about you or what people thought about you in high school. And they don't care. We don't, we are here to help you right now. Who are you? What do you want? Let's make it happen. And that's why I surround myself with these people, with you and with Nicole and with Sarah and with, you know, with all of these people, because that's the passion. That's the, I can call you or message you and be like, my head's in a place. This is what I'm thinking. And you're going to be able to look through that and see, oh, let's tweak this. Okay. Now my head's screwed on straight and I can keep going. And I have those people and those people have, I have found in my twenties and thirties. Mm-hmm. Like it's okay to find new people. If you don't look around you and see those people, keep looking. You're listening to this now. Yeah. Just found two new people. Yeah. Like, right. Um, how do you help people? Do you mentor, um, one-on-one? Do you do group stuff? I know you speak. How can people just kind of plug into you? <laughs> um, so I do speaking. If you want to plug into me, I have a Facebook page. Um, it's just Taylor Douglas. Really easy to find. I'm in the sure parenting group. If you're in that group on Facebook, you can find me. Um, if you send me a friend request though, make sure you message me. I get so many friend requests, like please message me. Um, and I'll accept your friend request. Um, I also have a pay. I also have a website. It's just tailoreddouglas.com. You can go on there and subscribe to things and look at stuff. Um, if you're local to Utah, I do local events here. You know, once we're able to do local <laughs> events here, <laughs> depending on when you're listening to this, we're in the middle of the COVID thing right now. Um, but that, I mean, that's really the best way to get to know me. Like to start having a conversation with me. Like I'll have a conversation with you because, um, that's what I do right now. That's what I do now. <laughs> From a 17 year old who could only see one possible future to this mom and wife and business owner and speaker and inspirer and just this life you've created is really tremendous. And I think it's really inspiring. I think that essentially every teenager should probably hear your story because I think that on some level, every teenager I've ever known has felt like they have a plan and this is how it needs to work out or they're fa- they failed at life. And mm-hmm. chances are it won't work out that way. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Super unlikely, at least. <laughs> Super unlikely. But the twists and turns are what makes it fun. And like you mentioned earlier, like healing and not hardening yourself. Like if you're listening to this right now, I want you to think in your life, like where have you taken a circumstance experience and actually healed yourself and made yourself better because of it? And what have you experienced that you've made yourself hard, right? Like where have you closed off your heart? Where have you closed off possibilities? Where have you said, never again am I going to do this? Never again will I be this way. No one will ever see me like this. Like I'll never be vulnerable. I'll never that. Like if you're cutting things off with always and never statements, it's a really, really good place to look for places that you have like hardened yourself a bit what's possible. Because sometimes the thing that sucks the most is the path. It's the path to take to actually develop yourself into who you want to be. Yeah. And that's what you should be focusing on because who you are is not determined by what you've experienced in your life. It's determined by what you're willing to do with your experiences, what you're willing to do with yourself, like the choices you make right now, not the choices you even made 10 minutes ago or last week. And it's the hardest reality to really come to terms with is that you get to make a new choice. Now, if you make a choice, you can make a different choice. Right? If you hire someone you don't like, you can fire that person. If you start dating someone you don't like, stop dating them. Like there's just, if you go to school and you hate it, stop going. Like you're not stuck with any, I mean, there are some choices that, you know, you can't undo the consequences, but you can always make a new choice. Absolutely. And I think something that's super interesting about that is people will often say that I have no choice. You have a choice. You might not like the consequences of the choices that are in front of you, but it's still a choice and there's power in that. Stop giving your power away. 
take that power. That is your choice to make. Um, yeah, and I, I hope she won't kill me, but my sister is really such a great example of this because she found herself pregnant and she had a choice. She could be a classic stereotypical teenage mom, or she could buck up and she could get serious about, okay, well, I'm going to be a mom heck of a lot earlier than I planned, but I'm still going to do it the way that I wanted. And she has dedicated herself to this child. And she, I am so proud of her. And she keeps trying to give me credit. She's like, well, you help me so much. And I call you and you always have an answer for me. I'm like, but you're doing the work. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could have done that work at 18 years old. Good gravy. That would have been like such a hard time to try to become a mother while I'm still trying to become who I am. And mm -hmm. To watch her become such a good mom, it's, it really just, it melts my heart. It makes me so excited for the life that she now realizes she can create. He, mm -hmm. You know, she, she's put into a situation and she put herself in that situation. Nobody did it for her, <laughs> but, but she had a choice, you know, she could let that determine her outcome. She could become sort of a statistic or, you know, well, these circumstances are hard, so I'm just going to let them happen around me. Or she could take ownership and take charge and be like, all right, well, then what do I need to do? And how do I need to do it? And what can I control? And what can't I control? And it's honestly been on my mind, like so the whole time we're talking, I just, I see her path to greatness. I see how much she's accomplished and I cannot wait to watch her continue to do that because she's doing that work now that we've done and we still do probably, at least I still do, of realizing, huh, I don't like this about myself. Okay, then what am I going to do to change it? And she's getting a head start, man. I mean, you are how old now? 27. 27. And you have all of these things that you've accomplished. I am and, 26. Huh? <laughs> I'm 26. <laughs> 26. Oh, Even yeah. more to the point. Like you've accomplished all of these things at this young age. And that was kind of one of the silver linings of going through so much so young. It was like, well, get a head start on making this amazing future. And I think that's how I see it for my sister. Like she gets a head start. She gets to start at 18 years old, like creating this awesome life. And she's modeling that for her daughter. Like how stinking cool. You're modeling this for your daughters. They get to look at mom and be like, oh, you know, mom has a problem. Mom figures out how to solve the problem. Mom asks for help. Mom studies. Mom learns. Mom grows. Mom changes. Mom teaches and inspires. Like that's a cool place to live, to have that as your example and for you to be able to be that example for so many other younger moms and heck older moms. I mean, anybody really can be inspired by your journey, but I think that it's especially important for any mom who's sitting there feeling like this is all I can do. This is all I can have and isn't quite satisfied. You have a choice. If you need inspiration, follow Taylor. If you need help, message one of us. We are here to help you because you can create the life that you want. And we believe in you. And we will inspire you and push you and probably make you a little bit uncomfortable because that is part of growth. But it, it'll be worth it. It will be worth it. You can always make a new choice. Yeah. And you get to choose. You said this word probably five times in this little place that you uh it just did all the things you just said you said create something and that's what it is it's a creation it comes from you from your willingness to actually make something come into existence right i have a four-step process that i teach people about you know how to move it, it's about healthy relationships but it's really about everything yeah. like the first step is get complete Get complete with whatever you have to about your past, about the choices you make, about the choices other people made, about the actions you take. Get complete with it. Like complete the story, whatever that looks like. The reason your brain keeps playing the same story. 
Oh no, it stopped you. Incomplete with the thing that caused I say it, it stopped you. And I was like, wait, stop talking because I want to hear this. Okay, get complete. The reason your brain com continues that story is because the story is incomplete, mm -hmm. right? Your brain made up a story about something you experienced. And so it keeps playing that story because it doesn't know what actually happened because it interpreted whatever you experienced in a certain way. But if you can go back and just say, here's a fact, here's a fact, here's a fact, and get really factual and less emotional about what happened to you, your brain now knows, okay, this happened, I made this decision, and it went this way. And now it can be complete, and you can work through whatever emotions and things and have conversations with whoever you have to have conversations with about that thing, and you can get complete. Then you have the opportunity to convert it into something that can heal you instead of hardening you. But if you find that between getting complete and converting your you know, story into something to fuel you, you're getting stuck, it's because you're still getting something out of the story you keep telling yourself. Like you're still getting a payoff from the actions you're taking. Like you still get to blame that person. You don't have to be responsible. I mean, there's, you get to be right about something, mm -hmm. you know, but if you are willing to just let it all go, you can really turn it into something to fuel you to go forward. And once you've done those two things, then you get to create something new, right? Put something in the space and then you just cause it. Go cause the thing that you want to exist to actually come into existence. Whatever that looks like, you know, you go tell people what you're up to. You're not asking for their permission, right? You're telling people, I'm up to this, and I'm just telling you because I want you to know what to expect from me from now on. I right? love that. <laughs> you're not asking for your permission. <laughs> yeah, I'm not asking for permission. And, you know, it's a journey to get to the place where you don't feel like you have to ask if something's okay. Right. I mean, there is definitely like managing the impact you have on other people, but other people are going to deal with having to change their expectations of who you've been in the past. They're going to keep expecting the person you've been. And while you're changing, you have to constantly show up as the new person. And sometimes you literally have to tell them that you're now a new person. I have had to do this in my life. People get, like I had a specific person in my life that kept treating me a specific way. And there was a point where I said, listen, you can no longer see who I am. You are not treating me like the person I am today, right? And you just keep treating me like the person that I really was several years ago. You keep treating me like the manipulative, whiny, angry child that I actually was. But I am not that person now. And you need to take this into your court because I've literally done everything I could possibly do to fix this with you. And it's now yours. And I'm just going to let you pick how you want this to go because I can't do anything else. Yeah. We don't get to control other people's choices or behaviors, but we do get to have boundaries. Mm -hmm. And those boundaries sometimes look like we're not talking right now. And sometimes they look like let's have a really hard conversation and we'll come out of it stronger. Mm -hmm. And, you know, either way it's okay I think there's a validity to either choice um, mm -hmm. I love your four-step process so very much um, have you ever read parenting from the inside out no I haven't okay because essentially what you're doing in step one is that book um, and it's it's based in neuroscience it's one of the Dan Siegel's like most favorite pieces of research that he's uncovered is that when a person can tell a cohesive narrative about their childhood and their upbringing, they are not going to have to repeat all of those actions and behaviors that were damaging, even if it was a terrible upbringing. If they yes. tell the story cohesively with logic and fact in chronological order, not bouncing all over or getting stuck in an emotion over here, like, but telling that story, then they can move forward and make different choices from it. And to hear you explain it, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like you learned this, you learned this from your experience and mm -hmm. it is a thousand percent perfectly in alignment with the neuroscience we have based on Dan Siegel's research, which is like, just, ah, I love when that happens. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it just points to the truth, right? I mean, nobody noticed this, but if you were to listen to the very beginning of this, when I introduced myself, I said, I found myself married to someone who was sleeping with other women, right? I didn't say I was married to a cheater, right? Because that's an emotional explanation of what was happening in my life. Like, 
emotional. Facts are not emotional. And if everything you deal with is emotional, sometimes just adding some logic and fact in can just make a really big difference, right? Like with kids, like what you say when you teach about like we're throwing food on the floor, right? They're throwing food on the floor, right? They're not like destroying your kitchen. Yes. They're not like <laughs> dropping bombs, you know, like there's, and we explain things so emotionally as human beings. And uh, I have friends who, this drives them totally crazy as I will like pull the logic out of what they're saying. I'm like, but did that really happen? Like what's actually going on? And like, it drives people crazy a little bit to deal with this part of me. But it is so helpful to just look at the actual reality of what some, what something that's happening rather than like the whole story. Yeah. And I love what you said about that because like, if you've never read parenting, from the inside out, like I haven't, I'm going to go read it now. I'll go read that and then read Sammy's book because I have Sammy's book right here on my shelf too. It's, it's incredible, Thank right? You. Like you have to go inside and fit, fix, right? Like you need to shift yourself and heal yourself in order to be different, mm -hmm. in order to take different actions. And it's like a cycle, right? You heal something, you take new actions. And sometimes it's the other way around. You take a new action and you heal something, right? Like, but you just do it over and over. And there's always some new step. There it's is. Something else. Right? Well, but, and I love that. Like, our brains will be like, ooh, cool, you're working on stuff. Here's another one. <laughs> <laughs> and and I do. I, I've noticed that with myself. But for me, having gone through, like, the really hard stuff to change it's like now when it happens, I'm almost excited. I'm like, Ooh, didn't know about this one. How are we going to fix this one? And I can, I can see it almost as a challenge because I know that I can get through this. Like I know this hard thing came up for a reason. What can mm -hmm. I learn from it? What can I extract from it? How can I use this to make me even better? And that's a really cool feeling to have that power, that, that acceptance of the lessons that we still have yet to learn and the joy of the journey. I love that I can still learn things. You know, I've yeah. never claimed to be perfect. I never claimed to have all of the answers. I am really good at seeing things through children's eyes, and I'm really good at coming up with ideas. That makes me good at my job, but that doesn't mean that I know everything. I'm always learning, and it's really one of my favorite things about my job is that the science that we have is always evolving and we're always learning more. Mm -hmm. So that will never stop happening. <laughs> but, um, but knowing that we do have the power to change where we're at, if we don't like it is very helpful and very inspiring. So okay. thank you so much for coming and sharing with us today. And if you guys are not already following Taylor, please do. It is worth it. It will brighten your feed. It will make social media actually improve your mood uh which is very hard to do for me and if you are not already in my facebook group it will be linked below um and yeah if you need to reach out to any of us either one of us you can find us on facebook or our websites taylordouglas.com and shareprinting.com thank you so much for being here and i will see everybody next week bye